then um, coming forward a little bit, uh, we started getting a whole lot of papers coming out of the United Kingdom, and particularly around um, the question of is work and health and well-being and how does it fit together, and you've already seen, uh, David um, has already quoted from Waddell and Burton, um, but in 2006 they produced this paper as work good for your health and well-being, and they said there is strong association between worklessness, and here's the phrase again, and poor health, and they talked at a high mortality, uh, poorer general health, poorer mental health, and higher uh, medical consultation, and David's already referred to that, so I'll just move quickly on. And then one of the researchers was um, Professor Sir Mansell Aylwood, who's from Wales, and he was actually in New Zealand just two weeks ago, and uh, at the time he was putting together some documents for Tony Blair, uh, when they were coming into government going back a number of years, and he was looking for some key things that he wanted to bring to the politicians' attention, and he assembled this group of, of facts. Uh, the first one is, is the one that I find most interesting. Uh, it's about health risk and equating it to smoking. And uh, this was done by a chap called Ross uh, in the United States. He works for the Smithsonian Institute and was the editor or was writing in the Smithsonian, their journal. And in 1995, he was actually looking at the questions of risks in life. He was thinking about how risky is it to cross the road, to fly in an aeroplane, to go skiing, and thinking about that sort of aspect and saying, well, let's rank these things. And as he was doing that work, he came across the evidence around work and being out of work and health. And that was the thing that struck him as he read through more and more information. And he did this equation where he said, well, let's see how unhealthy it is to be out of work. And he equated it with being out of work for more than six months in this case is the equivalent of smoking 10 packets, 10 packets, not one packet, 10 packets of cigarettes a day. Then coming to some other facts, and you've seen some of these already from David's talk, I mean, suicide in young men um, that have been out of work for more than six months has increased 40-fold. And the young men meant the age 18 to 24, so he really is just talking about young people um, and others, and you've seen the one about uh, the, the risk of heavy construction. Um, in the United States, there was also work being done, and this is from the work from the American College of Occupational and Environmental Medicine, and they published a paper in 2006 which was described preventing needless work disability by helping people stay unemployed. Quite a long mouthful for a title of a paper, but in fact I think captures one of the key things that interested me was about doing something about things, so uh, saying that things that you do may make a difference. Uh, that paper introduced the stay at work language, so uh, the, the sense that uh, perhaps you don't have to be off at work at all, perhaps you can be accommodated at work and you actually stay at work. Uh, made the, noted, in fact, the thing that I talked about earlier about how often people who are out of work for a long time, the injuries aren't major ones, it, it's not the, the injury, it's something else that's important. They recommended to focus on process, and I'm going to come back to that because I think that's important. And um, the other thing which I, I think is very obvious for all of us probably in this room is that talking about this is actually quite common sense. When I go out and talk to medical practitioners, as I do quite a lot about this, people intuitively think it makes sense. So it is common sense, but um, somehow I don't think we've actually seen the, the, the seriousness of it or the, the, the impact of it in terms of the suicide, the mental health, and, and all those other conditions. Then, of course, in the United Kingdom, we had Dame Carol Black's work, and uh, Working for a Healthier Tomorrow, the document came out in 2007, and uh, Dame Carol really did identify this issue here. She said, for most people, work is the key factor in their self-worth, family esteem, and identity. And, and that's the key. It's about how, for most people, actually, that's work is a key part of that. And then if people become sick uh, or injured, in fact, uh, they're not, and then not helped quickly enough, or the system works against them, then you can have this downward spiral. Uh, she recommended a whole range of things, but these are just some of them, and uh, the question of a new fit for work service as opposed to the sick note. Uh, Lloyd George, 80-odd years ago in the United Kingdom, introduced the sick note, uh, but on Easter Tuesday this year, the sick note went out of being, and in the United Kingdom now, you get a fit note. So doctors produce fit notes instead of sick notes. Uh, interesting change. Um, Associated with the work in the United Kingdom, again, that you've heard of Waddell and Burton and Kendall, his name is in this paper, and that's Nick Kendall, who's a New Zealander, uh, clinical psychologist. Uh, he was out in uh, New Zealand just a couple of weeks ago talking to the Physiotherapy Society. Um, made the point that actually what happens early on is key. 
what happens on day one is important, and the things that people say on day one are really important. Uh, and I, I find myself, that's something I continue emphasising to people who come into contact with people who have just lost their jobs, who have just had an injury. What the nurse says, what the medical practitioner says, what the supervisor says on day one can make a real key difference. And then just two weeks ago, we had the uh, Australian, Royal Australian College of Physicians and their faculty, which is the Faculty of Occupational and Environmental Medicine, release, release this position paper, realising the health benefits of work. And um, there's some key and important things that I just uh, read from that. Uh, to date, the findings are unambiguous. In general, work is good for health and well-being. Uh, and uh, David has also made a reference to the fact that work means good work, decent work. It doesn't mean toxic work. On the other hand, what I would also say is that I think we have to be careful about that because there's actually not many jobs today in New Zealand and in fact in many parts of the world which you would really describe as toxic work. And even work which for many of us may seem repetitive, dull, boring, for many people produces a sense of self-worth through the fact that it is meaningful and they have some income and therefore can contribute more in a way that they couldn't otherwise. So you have to be careful to be not judgmental about people's work. Um, but there is no doubt we're not talking about toxic work, we are talking about good or decent work. And um, obviously the impact's not just on the individual, it goes right through families and communities. And then this other point, which was very striking to me as I looked at those cases one by one many years ago, was that what you actually saw was not people getting better with more time off work. Being off work wasn't healing in the longer term, in fact it, it ended up in a worsening of symptoms. So the, the idea that you put people off work to get them better just didn't seem to work. In fact, many of those people got much worse.